Okay, so this video is to help those who are trying to make uh, callouts, a uh, more advanced basically version of callouts. So we have a system in place, as you saw in the basic tutorial, that allows you to create these kinds of basic labels uh, complete with a line and you have full control over the uh, color and appearance and scale, et cetera, these things with, a, with an automatic uh, line generation to the object that they're assigned to. But in a lot of cases, you want something a little more flexible, maybe something that doesn't face the camera or uh, something where you can control this layout, maybe even add images, video, um, something a little bit more, um, again, more, more flexibility. And you might even want something that doesn't involve a line, but, uh, but allows you to set up uh, an info panel or a card uh, that maybe even functions spatially as a menu or something like that. So this would be an example of one of these uh, info panels or something similar being used as a call out. So as you can see, we've got a line system and it doesn't turn to face the camera in this case, um, but it's also got, if I simulate this, the ability, uh, I just created an additional step after here. So it's also got the ability, uh, as in the case here, to include a video. So you can tap on that to play back, get a little bit extra information about exactly how this uh, needs to work. So the way to do that, it uh, definitely requires a little bit more manual effort, but um, you, you know the amount of flexibility you get with it is uh, is actually quite impressive. So let's go ahead and start by creating a, adding a new step. Now, when you bring components in or create new components, they're going to be added at the origin or 000. So the easiest way to do it is either on a blank step or on a step where the other elements are hidden. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Um, so I'm going to start by creating something. So you can use the create menu here. Uh, and I'm going to start with a plane to represent the back of that information panel. So there's my first element. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to open up using Alt P, the object properties dialog. And I'm going to create a new material. And I'm going to name that um, info panel. And I'm just going to select uh, this light blue here and use that. So um, now I can scale that as I see fit, but for the moment, um, I'm just gonna leave it basically like that. So instead of using the create panel, I can also right click. So in this case, I could have done the plane here, but I'm actually gonna use this to create 3D text, which is obviously a little bit bigger than I want. Um, so I'm gonna select the scale tool here, scale that oops, way down here move it up just a touch, rotate, and then I'm going to hold control as I rotate it here, and that'll just force it into 15 degree increments. And I'm just going to do that right now, change that to two patient port. And let's see here, just scale that down. Uh, oops, scale that down a little bit and position that roughly where I'm gonna want it. Um, and then I'm also going to open up the asset library using Alt L and take a look and I'm gonna bring in some, so, so far I've created some things, now I'm gonna use some existing images. So here's a uh, warning and a rounded rectangle. Both of these are PNG files. Um, and this effect, by the way, is something which is just because these are flat components that are all sitting on exactly the same zero height. So uh, they're just, this is called a, a, a planar effect, a coplanar effect. And it just means that they're fighting over which one should be visible because they're basically at the exact same position. So I'm just going to take that uh, rounded rectangle, move it up just a touch, move that rounded or that warning image uh, up just a touch also. Now, these images are actually created with a transparent background using the PNG file format. So it's used for logos, things like that also. Um, so just to bring that into effect, if you look at the material for these things, you'll see the alpha mode, which is another term for transparency, change that from opaque to blend. And I'm gonna do that for both of these elements. There we go. Now, the other thing I can do is you can tint images. So I'm gonna actually take advantage of that with this rounded uh, rectangle file and just pick that same blue and as you can see, it tints that uh, file to be uh, in, in blue tones, which is, uh, you know, kind of useful. And you can also, of course, everything I'm doing here, for the most part, or a lot of it, you could bring in as one image and just position that spatially as you see fit. 
Um, but of course, doing it this way allows you a lot of control. You can uh, edit your text whenever you see fit, uh, and it's a lot more efficient as a, as a way to operate. So I'm just going to use this image as a little bit of a title block here, uh, scale that to fit a little bit. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to leave that alone. Let's take that image. And again, I'm just going to use the, the uh, keyboard shortcut keys, Q, W, E, R, and use those uh, from here on in to just uh, quick select the tool from the move, rotate, scale up here. So uh, scale that, move that up into position here. Now, anything that I've done here, I can also use Control D to duplicate. So that is a good way to start my next text. So this text, I want to say... all times and i'll anchor that to the middle left so that way i can just position it there and then scale until i'm happy with the result that looks pretty good yeah something like that uh pretty good start so now one of the other elements i'm missing is my video so i'm just going to use alt l again go back to my company assets um now supplied with create as a sample video that you could try this with, but I have a ventilator clip specifically for this. So I'm just gonna bring that in. And I should point out that all these elements, these images, these planes, anything like this, you can do this um, without putting them together. So at any time you want to, you can also bring in a video in this way and just position it next to what you're working with and just use it just that way so that there's a video floating we call it spatially so in space right next to your uh, desired element so you don't have to put it into a card like this this is just um, you know sort of a more aesthetic way to uh, to handle that kind of thing and use these types of uh, interactive elements or, or visual elements as another option, instead of using the sort of standard UI interface, um, which is, you know, which is what we used. Uh, and you can also include video and images here in that 2D layer. And sometimes that's a very effective option, but um, this opens up the doors to, uh, to uh, create those sort of elements in space directly next and not, and not use that 2D layer, which in some cases is a really effective um, method. So I'm just going to move this down, scale it down again. Uh, so that's pretty good. Just position that. And then the last element was basically just another control D on the text. I'll change that anchoring to the middle center and say tap image for video. And there we go. That's um, pretty much exactly what I wanted. So uh, with, maybe I'll just adjust this plane. Um, but before I change that, I'm going to, I'm going to make a change here. So the problem right now, I've got everything I basically wanted a little bit of a tweak needed here still. Um, maybe I'll do that first. There we go. So I've got everything I want here, but if I want to move this and position it in my scene, I've got to select all these elements and potentially move them, rotate them. They're probably not going to behave exactly as I want. And that's just much more, that's just much messier than, than what I want to be dealing with for my scene. So what I'm going to do is create an empty object. And an empty object is an interesting concept. It's basically nothing. Um, it's just a position, a point in, in, in space. Uh, it can be positioned, rotated, scaled, uh, but there's nothing visual to it. So um, it won't do much if you scale it or rotate it. Um, but uh, what it's really effective for is you can use it as an attachment point, as a, as a positioner, basically, for something like a call out or potentially for a highlight sphere or something like that. And what it's also really effective for is as an organizational tool. So um, it, you can think of it in a way as uh, almost like a folder or um, as a, a container to, to group things under. And as such, you'll see it's a part of more complex assemblies. You'll often see empty objects. And the most obvious way to determine if it's an empty object is it has zero triangles associated with it and zero objects, at least until things start getting attached to it. So, uh, and you'll see there's no material either associated with it. And that's because there's no surface to assign a material to. 
So what it is uh, really useful for is something like this. I'm going to use it as a parent for all these things. So I'm going to call this uh, info panel, oops, panel one. So I'm going to take all those in. Uh, I'm going to take all those elements uh, with using shift select and drag it right onto that info panel. And as you can see now, they're all embedded underneath that, uh, just like if they were in a, a directory structure. Um, so now by just selecting that info panel, which is still in that same position, I can manipulate that entire block. So that's now basically um, created a, a, a single unit of all those items. So uh, one thing to keep in mind when you do that is in the same way that those elements all follow in terms of moving, rotating, and those kinds of things, it's also true of scale. So one thing that you might have considered doing is using that plane, this object that's setting up the back of this uh, item, you might have thought of, well, why don't I just connect all those items to that? Um, but that's actually not a great solution. I'll show you why. So if we were to do that and then decide that I wanted to create that, um, maybe I want to make that a little taller. Maybe I've decided to add another element at the bottom here, the way I did earlier. Um, if I start to stretch that, you can see what happens. Because those are children, they're also affected in the same way that they follow moves and rotations. So we don't want that. So I won't link those to the plane. I'll just link them at the same level to that info panel. And that allows me to still have that flexible control over those elements underneath it. And the same applies to all these different elements. But uh, essentially, that is the finish. That's all it takes. So I'm just going to go ahead and rotate that up to 90 degrees. And you know, you can move it at that point, Oops. move it at that point, uh, position it wherever in the scene you want. Now, there's only one more thing if I want to use this as a call out, and I would need a line. Um, now, unfortunately, we don't have an automatic system for this. Um, but we do have a bit of a workaround in that we've provided in the asset library under your company assets, under tools, there's a section called deformable objects. And one of those is a line, a rigid line. So if I just drag this in, you'll see that what it shows you is an individual line. Um, so I'm going to just start making some changes to it. Under its parent, it's got the actual line. So this is an actual very simple model, basically a box. Um, but it's been rigged with two controllers, very simple controllers that control the start and the end position of that line. So uh, first thing I want to do is actually make that material a little different. So this default material, let's create a new material. And I'm going to call this line white. And I'm just going to change it from standard to diffuse unlit, which basically makes it self-illuminated nice and bright. So that looks good. Um, so these controllers, as you can see, I can position those independently, but what I'm going to do is move the entire line to align to this. I mentioned earlier how much easier it is to build things right at zero, zero, zero. But I also want to point out here that you certainly don't have to do it that way. And quite often you'll want to be moving items to existing elements. So I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick for uh, doing that more easily. Um, you can use the alignment structure here. So you can select two objects and then select a type of alignment to align them along a specific axis. Um, <clears throat> but there's an easy way to do this. In this case, I'm just going to drag this and, and child it to that info panel also. Um, so now if I move this around, you'll see, same thing. Um, but now if you look at the position of this element, whereas before this XYZ would have been saying, what the position of this object is relative to the origin of the scene. So it's offset essentially from zero, zero, zero. Because it's been childed to this empty object that's info panel one, the position X, Y, and Z are actually recording its offset from that zero position. What that means is if I just go zero, 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 it puts it right at that point, exactly where that was. So, um, that means now I can just adjust it relative to that. So I'm just going to move it out a little bit so I can see it better. Now, the other thing is I'd like to have some, uh, spheres on the end of this, some little bullets almost, and I'd like that line to be a little thicker. So the best way to do the, um, the, both of those things, first of all, I want to create some spheres. So I'm going to just right click in here, create a sphere, 
a little bit bigger than I wanted. So let's just scale that down right off the bat. Maybe something like that. I'm going to use the same technique, just dragging that onto the start point and then zeroing that out to put it in the right place. And it's a bit dull gray. So what I'm going to do is apply that same material, which was uh, line white. And there we go. So now it's similar. I'm going to select it, control D to duplicate it, drag that and attach it to the end point of the line, and then use that same technique to reposition it zero, 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 so that it's aligned to that. So now I've got my points and I want to scale those up a little bit. I want the actual points to be bigger and I want the line to be bigger. So I can do both of those things by just scaling this start point as a controller, as you can see. So that's pretty good. I'm gonna do the same thing on the end point. And then I can just position this. So if I just decide that I want this down here and the start point to be over here, that's pretty good. And actually the actual spheres may be still just a little bit too big. So let's, uh, Let's scale that down just a little bit and a little bit. And actually the other thing I'll maybe just quickly point out, if I, if I want to match scale to that, I can actually always just right click here on the transforms for this object, select the other object, right click and paste. And that'll actually match the scale and the position and rotation exactly. So there you have it. That's a, a customized call out um, with the line, but if you, if you remove that line, you've got basically a custom panel. Now, now that you've put in that effort, you can also just select the top level of it, use control D. So let's maybe just use that quickly to do this. And then you've got a second call out that you can now customize. So in this case, you might call this the from patient port. I'll make that align to the middle left position that. That way, when I edit it in the future, it'll uh, stay aligned there as I go forward. Um, and if you imagine if I actually remove this, and maybe let's just say, I'll take out a couple of these elements. And just want to point out how easy it'll be to create a menu using this kind of a system. So Obviously we have a methodology here for creating a menu using the interface layer, but you might decide that you want more flexibility and you wanna do it spatially. So in the scene, as opposed to having this sit on top of the view for your end user. This type of approach, this more spatial menu type of approach is actually really handy for uh, HoloLens too. So when your users um, aren't seeing that overlay directly in front of you know, the same way it is with a handheld device. So by using an approach like this, you can also create a menu very easily that your users can interact with. And then you can position this wherever in the scene you see fit, um, oops, wherever in the scene you see fit. And by the way, you can also billboard it so that it'll follow the camera. Billboarding just means following the camera in the same way that these labels do. Um, but with uh, the more generic billboarding option here, you can actually choose any individual axis. So you can have it just spin around its vertical axis to follow the user, uh, which is sometimes convenient for uh, a menu or select any or all of the axes to do that. So to continue selecting, uh, setting up a menu, what you can do is select any element that you've put in here and then just assign um, a, an object trigger to that element. So in this case, you could set this, uh, these could apply to three different sequences uh, with titles here, just like the menu. And then you can just simply select the sequence that you want your user to navigate to if they tap on that sequence. Uh, so you've got a really effective way to set up a spatial menu system here. So hopefully that helps. You've got a really solid system to uh, develop an alternate type of interface or information delivery system. Uh, some users even use these as uh, completely setting up their instructions for every step. You can even set up a button uh, in the same way that we talked about with object triggers uh, to navigate uh, to continue the step. Hope that's helpful and enjoy WorkLink Create.